हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी अनदर एडिशन ऑफ द डिस्कशन ऑफ एम सी क्यूज ऑन द न्यूट्रिशनल डिसऑर्डर्स द फर्स्ट एम सी क्यूज इज मालनरिश चाइल्ड वॉज ट्रीटेड फॉर कॉम्प्लिकेशन ड्यूरिंग ट्रीटमेंट सिग्नल ऑफ एंट्री टू द रिहेबिलिटेशन फीस इज वेन एवर अ माल नरिश चाइल्ड इज एडमिटेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू आर ट्रीटिंग द कॉम्प्लिकेशंस एंड द कॉम्प्लिकेशंस यू ऑल नो इन अ माल नरिश चाइल्ड कैन बी बेसिकली हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया इट कैन बी हाइपोथर्मिया इट इज डिहाइड्रेशन इट इज इन्फेक्शन एंड इट इज द माइक्रो न्यूट्रियट डेफिशियंसी माइक्रो न्यूट्रियट डेफिशियंसी दिस आर द मेजर कॉम्प्लिकेशन नाउ आफ्टर द कॉम्प्लिकेशन आर करेक्टेड यू गो ऑन टू द न्यूट्रिशनल फेज रिहेबिलिटेशन फेज वेयर देर इज फेज वन देन देर इज अ ट्रांजिशन फेज एंड देन देर इज फेज टू नाउ वेन वी शुड मूव now if you look at the choices resolution of infection disappearance of signs of the micronutrient deficiency constant blood sugar level constant blood sugar level and reduced edema now if you basically look at one of the choices resolution of infection although you will you will like in every child but only two things you need to remember if there is improved appetite if there is improved appetite and there is decreased edema you go on to the rehabilitation phase so if there is improved appetite and reduced edema so out of the choices given here the right answer is the reduced edema then you go on to the rehabilitation phase of the diet second question encephalopathy seen in the refeeding syndrome is mainly a result of now we basically think of what is the refeeding syndrome when the child was getting less to eat now the child suddenly gets enough calories what will happen when the child will get more to eat there will be increased glucose inside the cell there will be increased glucose inside the cell and due to the increased glucose what will happen there will be increased atp and due to the increased atp there will be increased activity of the sodium potassium atpase pump and due to this there will be more sodium which will be pumped out of the cell and there will be increase in the extracellular fluid volume and this extracellular fluid volume is responsible for breathlessness and the enlargement of liver which you see in the refeeding syndrome right so that is basically one thing is secondly if the glucose utilization is increased inside the cell what will happen the potassium will move in so but there will be hypokalemia there will be hypokalemia similarly magnesium is also utilized inside the cell and there will be hypomagnesemia third thing the phosphorus will also be used inside the cell because if atp is produced adp requires for, along with phosphorus which leads to the atp formation so there will be hypophosphatemia hypophosphatemia right and apart from this there will also be thiamine deficiency for as the thiamine is required for the glucose utilization so this all is the picture what you get in the refeeding syndrome and encephalopathy can be due to the thiamine deficiency encephalopathy can be due to the thiamine deficiency right so this is the question on the refeeding syndrome moving on to the next question all are the all of the following are the param, following parameters can be used for assessment of dehydration in a malnourished child except right normally when you are being taught that malnourished child you first of all look at the skin turgor but skin turgor you do not look in the case of a malnourished child so you should remember what are the reliable signs and what are the unreliable signs mental signs is unreliable because in quasi orcar already you get is psychomotor changes so psychological changes can very well be seen there so it is unreliable mouth tongue and tears again unreliable skin turgor if you see in the marasmus there are already the loose folds of skin present 
and if there are loose folds of skin present that means the skin turgor is not a reliable sign of mal and uh, sorry dehydration in a malnourished child then what are the reliable signs decreased or absent urine absent urine flow this is the most reliable sign this is the most reliable sign second weak or absent radial pulse prolonged capillary filling time then recent sunken eyes sunken eyes is not a specifically sign of dehydration remember the word should be recent sunken eyes because sunken eyes can very well be seen in a malnourished child increased thirst then there is history of diarrhea with large volumes of this stool so this all are considered to be the reliable signs so putting this in the question increased thirst is a reliable recent sunken eyes is reliable history of diarrhea is reliable but mental state is not a reliable sign so right answer to this question here is the mental state moving on to the question number 4 regarding treatment of infection in severe malnourished child which of the following is true so if you see in this question we are talking of infection in a child with sam severe acute malnutrition in severe acute malnutrition every child is started on the broad spectrum antibiotics on day 1 broad spectrum antibiotics includes either you are giving is cotrimoxazole or you are giving is the oral amoxicillin or you are giving is the oral amoxicillin but if there is evidence of infection there is evidence of infection or there is complication you start with injection ampicillin plus gentamicin you start with the injection ampicillin plus gentamicin if there is skin infection present skin infection present you add is the cloxacillin you add is the cloxacillin if there is no response in 48 hours or there is presence of septic shock or there is presence of the septic shock third generation sphalosporins are added we are adding is the third generation sphalosporins right so this is basically in a case of a sam severe acute malnourished child is right so if we put here broad spectrum antibiotics are given to all child on day 1 absolutely right you are giving antibiotic should be started only after blood culture report no oral antibiotics are started for meningitis either you are giving is the ceftriaxon plus amikacin sorry you are giving is ceftriaxon alone or you are giving is the cefotaxim plus amikacin cefotaxim plus amikacin that means b and c are not true only the choice number 1 is true broad spectrum antibiotics are given to all on the day 1 moving on to the last question here mother was diagnosed as having hepatitis b in pregnancy breast feeding should be started in the child remember hepatitis b is not a contraindication to for the breast feeding so there should be no delay in the initiation of the breast feeding right so if you see here what are the contraindication of the breast feeding maternal contraindication active herpetic lesions on the breast or active varicella lesions on the breast mother having herpes but not on the breast is not a contraindication that is not a contraindication in such a scenario mother having herpes or varicella other than on the breast breast feeding is given you just avoid the contact of the child with the skin lesion of the mother then mother having active htlv human t lymphotropic virus 1 infection mother using some drugs other than the methadone right illicit drugs that is a contraindication mother on chemotherapy or radiotherapy hiv infection but only in the developed countries not in india in india it is not not a contraindication untreated active tuberculosis again only in the developed countries what they say that the child should not be given breastfeeding at least for 2 weeks or till the time 
the mother is no longer contagious and that is approximately two weeks. But tuberculosis and HIV that is not a contraindication in India. Right. So these are the questions on the nutritional disorders. In the next, we will be discussing the questions on the respiratory system. Thanks.